rest of this simple matrix, block triangular, getting linear forms which have such kind of matrices is not an easy task. Um, to finalize what we call a product, it has nice properties. So, if you take a product, this is a complex, it, it's also transitive, right, with respect to the ordinary matrix product. Um, but the most important property which relates it to um, the matrix product, if you take a vectorization of the product of three matrices, is equivalent to the product, Kronecker product of P transpose A, that's what I always forget, always have to look, A is P, P transpose A times vectorization of X. So it is convenient way to represent linear operators acting on matrices, linear operators acting on matrices. So if, if it's a linear operator acting on matrices and it's a sum of matrix by matrix product, then you can use the chronic product as a convenient way of writing this down into a larger system. So that, that's what I already said a little bit. So basically, in graph theory, uh, if you have a graph, the graph has adjacent symmetries, right? So then the size of the matrix is the number of vertices times the number of vertices. And if the vertices are connected, you put one. This is an adjacency matrix, and you might also have a weighted adjacency matrix when you have a certain weight corresponding to the connection. And well, in, the, in the LA, we have had quite a few projects related to gra graph mining. So, for example, community detection. You want to find out tightly connected blocks. Graph clustering, which, which, is, which is the same. And then there are quite a few recent, recent results on working with graphs, and there are a lot of data represented as graphs, actually. For example, I don't know, who, who votes for who on Wikipedia and many other good ones. Yeah, so the, la the largest is uh, graph uh, hyperlink is 120 billion hyperlinks. It's not a number of how many vertices I should have. Or it's, it's, it's the number of vertices, 128. Number of vertices, it's what they do. Ah, okay. So it's 3.5 billion, which is quite large. So probably even storing this, you will need a lot of RAM. Not on the laptop, so there are machines of shared memory, such kind of memory, but this is large. There is also a collection of, 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 of and graphs are here, for example, in biology and in many other places. So then there are also that connections. This, this is all called graph mining. Uh, there are again many sparse matrices, and people who are developing linear algebra algorithms, they have a certain um, repository for storing examples. Okay, you want a sparse matrix some size, it can be positive definite, it can be not positive definite, it may have one type of co communication or another, and this floor in the sparse matrix collection is, sorry, is an example. Yes, so you basically want to, to find something. I, I, I don't want to type it here. Yeah, and these are corresponding visualization of the matrix, right? So uh, th this is a matrix visualized in terms of graph. So this graph, if you take the adjacency matrix of this graph, or this graph, or this graph, or this graph, uh, you get the corresponding sparse matrix. Well, you may see nice patterns, but also actually from the properties of this graph, you may get estimates for the complexity and so on. In the worst case, the dense matrix would be all to all connection. And for sparse, we have different type of connection. Probably this is the, uh, the, the main community, and these are some disconnected components. If you cut the edges, for example, and so on, but these matrices, they come from different applications. So can, for example, what's this? 
this. Okay, 
Lord who doesn't scroll. Okay, problems do not come in one. So basically, you plot an image of a matrix and put a pixel if the corresponding element is not zero. So this is a small matrix and the fact that this is just 25 to 25. But of course, if you have a very large matrix, then presenting a sparsity pattern is now a more complicated task. So for example, if I make it here 500, yeah. So you will not see in such kind of representation, this is a five diagonal matrix, you will not be able only to see this is sort of diagonal matrix. But in fact, there are five diagonals there. So you have to be careful with presentation. So this is, because the resolution is just not enough, these points, they go together. But still, sparsity pattern often is a good pre uh, pre uh, represent, uh, representation of how the, where the non-zeros are located and how the sparsity pattern looks like. So one way is to draw the graph. And drawing a nice visualization of the graph is actually a difficult research task. Another way is to go the sparsity pattern and look where the non-zeros are located. Both have their advantages and disadvantages. Again, maybe both can be useful. So it's important. And actually, well, the sparsity pattern can be used, but again, for example, for solving linear systems, the graph structure is more important, not the sparsity pattern. Basically, looking at the sparsity pattern, you may estimate how many non-zeros you have and where they are more connected from others or not. So, for example, if you take the graph, you construct the adjacency matrix, and then you do, for example, graph cluster, and then you put the sparsity pattern. What is you expect the matrix to be in this like block diagonal form. In the block diagonal form, and basically my Clustering algorithm works well because the vertices in each block are connected to each other and not connected everywhere else. But again, if you have a five diagonal matrix with a small shift, you may not be able to see like in this example. So again, the definition that you may use, and then you can use do at least matrix by vector product uh, faster. And the goal is of course to solve linear system faster and compute eigenvalues faster. Then with a full matrix. So now we're going to address three questions. So first is how to store sparse matrix. This is actually a non-trivial question. Storing is representing a sparse matrix may have a huge impact on the, 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 the final goal. So then how to store? There are several formats. And the second one, how we use this formula to multiply sparse matrix by vector fast. So sparse mat matrix by vector product is of crucial importance, for example, for solving linear systems because that's the way we will test that we get a good solution. So if you have an approximation to the solution, we want to test A times X equals B. If you cannot do that, the question whether what we are doing, right? So we need to multiply, and in the end we will briefly discuss how to solve linear systems, and then the details will be in the next lectures. So the first two is more or less straightforward, but need to we need to discuss it. So first is so-called COO. They have strange names again from previous years. Coordinate format. So what's coordinate format? It's very natural. This is sparse matrix. It has zeros and non-zeros. It has very few non-zeros. So we say in position two, three, we have uh, this element. So we store three lists, three arrays, two integer arrays of coordinates and one array of values. Where is located? So what's the problem of, uh, yeah, before going to details, so what's the problem with the coordinate format? Well, this is okay. Probably it's a difficult, we'll discuss it later. But there is a problem with coordinate format. Well, multiplying matrix by vector is not easy. Short answer, yes, but okay, it's a subset of your answer. Uh, 
there is another one, so called list of lists. So you have a list and then an element of this list is another list which, 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 which shows no zero element in each row. And then the two main formats which I used for, and then this one is good for example for adding and removing elements. So sometimes you need to take, a, for example, a vertex out or take an element of the matrix out and the coordinate format, you basically have to copy the whole array. You want to take one, one element away. If you have just had a, a link list, that's easy. Uh, so for example, if you need to form a matrix, 